Welcome to Marketing Mondays with me, Fadzi. I am a social media marketer and the founder of Handled, which is a social media agency. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you through a case study and we're going to be looking at the brand or fashion house called The Row and diving deep into how they are able to sell bags that are worth £37,000. Yes. The Row is an independent fashion house that was founded in 2006 by twins Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen. They started off as actresses and then published their own books, um, a lot of which I used to spend my summers in school reading. Um, and then they ventured into fashion. The Row actually started as a side project. It started off as a shirt that they designed. It was a um, the concept was a well-draped t-shirt and they sold this for around $200 I believe at the time. Um, they felt like at the time no other designer brand was creating clothing that was just made for everyday wear. So that's kind of how the row started. You would think that um, a brand that's able to sell something for 37 k would use their celebrity status to kind of push the brand forward but actually what they've tried to do is focus on the artistry and the tailoring and the quality of the clothing rather than being the face of the brand um, so you'll notice that with them they are hardly ever like in you know the marketing campaigns for the row they don't put themselves as the face of the brand they'll rather somebody else be the face of the brand and just focus on the actual clothing and the quality that they're providing. In Ashley's own words, she says, um, we didn't really want to be in front, in front of it. We didn't necessarily even want to let people know it was us in a way. I mean, it's one of those things where it was really about the product to the point where we're like, who could we get to kind of front this so we don't have to? I think to this day, you'll see we really put the product first and I completely agree even if you look at their social media campaigns um, or anything about their brand um, you wouldn't know that it's by them unless you did a little bit of digging or you were just in the industry like that. On to the next point the marketing. How do you get the word out that you've launched this amazing brand with great quality clothing and also at a certain price point that you know that not everyone can afford? I think two things that make The Row so successful is one, they know what they stand for and they know what they're offering and they also know, number two, who their target audience is. Um, so they're not a brand that's trying to appeal to everyone, they're not a brand that is going to try and go viral. I mean, even if you look at some of their clothing items or their accessories, it's all very understated. It doesn't scream designer in the way that most people are used to. It doesn't, it's, it's not filled with monograms. It's very actually like wearable everyday clothing, but very high quality. When we think about the row and how they put themselves out there. Um, everything is very stripped back and simple. Um, if we look at, for example, the Vogue feature in September 2017, the, they bought out the, the full double page of Vogue and that was their feature and all they did was slap their logo on there. So it just said the row. A very simple, plain, stripped back Ad. nothing loud nothing that's like screaming in your face come and buy us um, and that appeals to a certain demographic if you think about celebrities a lot of um, popular women for example are often photographed by paparazzi by fans etc so as a well-known or a popular woman who's constantly photographed you may not want to come outside and wear something that makes you hyper visible so you may just want clothing that's a little bit more stripped back still high quality but not loud and in people's faces i would say their customer is um an educated woman who understands fit what they like what's easy to wear and well-dressed women that's who buys into that's the kind of woman that buys into the row they also have menswear there but i think 
you can kind of fit the same criteria in terms of who their core customer base is, people that appreciate a good fit and um, people that are well dressed. I also wanted to share something that I found in a magazine or an article um, that was shared by one of their customers just to kind of give you an idea to visualize who they're marketing to. So it says, I was walking into my favorite restaurant, Omen Azin, when a striking woman in her 60s passed me wearing the most simple, luxurious coat, which was the color of white clay. I had to ask her who made it and she replied with a quiet smile, it's the row. The row's clothing and accessories are honest, unpretentiously artistic, effortless and timeless. For me, clothes and accessories have to be effortless. I'm one of those women who is dressed and out the door in five minutes, but still want to look good. And um, this was one of their customers, Nian Fish, who said this. She's a creative director. And I think that for me really sums up well what the row stands for and who they appeal to. So it's not always the celebrity that they're appealing to. It's actually quite a mature and professional woman. Um, and somebody that appreciates quality over trends. I did come across a YouTuber who is a collector of the row and she collects bags and like other items from them. And just hearing her speak about some of these items, I might just insert like a little clip here, um, just so that you get an idea of what the row customers are looking for. I, I think that this is a timeless, really truly timeless shape. You know, every designer at some point has put out something similar to this. And Bottega, of course, is known for their hobos and, and a very, very classic shape. But I don't know of a brand really that hasn't at least played around with a version of this shape. And there's a reason for it. It's because it's so functional. You know, it's a, it's a shoulder bag with a flat strap on the top. So it's very comfortable. Zipped closure so things don't fall out. And it's pretty. It's, it's just feminine. And it looks nice with everything. It really does. And for her, I think this bag was more so about functionality. And when you look at her and you look at her style, she's a professional woman and her style is very stripped back, timeless, classic and wearable. The bag that actually inspired this talk um, from the row. So it's called the Margot 10 Buckled Alligator Tote. It's the bag that just kind of made me think about, okay, who would actually buy a bag that's worth 37k? But more importantly, how do you market that? So how do you market a, a bag that's worth that much? And who do you market it to? And I think in this video, we've kind of covered that. Knowing what your brand stands for, um, and for the row, it's about the quality of the clothing rather than the names in front of it or behind it. Um, and two, knowing your target audience and what that kind of woman or man wants. Um, and I think the row do that beautifully. And I think this is marketing advice that you can take to any brand, um, your brand, if you're listening as a business owner. Join us again next Monday for more marketing tips and case studies.